This is the ultimate battle of the wallets on chains. A lot of you are wondering whether you should go for the Constance or the Kelly or even just a Chanel. And in today's video, we're going to help you find out. As per usual, in my comparison videos, we're going to do everything super comprehensive. We're going to talk about all the details of each of them, do tons of mod shots and the pros and cons, and of course, how things fit in each of them to help you decide which one is for you. You guys might be wondering, how did I get these two? wallets on chains to compare with mine well these are loaned to me by Lux Du Jour this video is in partnership with Lux Du Jour I also want to let you know that I will be co-hosting a Lux Du Jour live stream it's gonna be this weekend so coming up really soon Sunday September the 10th from noon to 1 30 pacific time so make sure to join us mark it on your calendar because usually on those kinds of live streams i don't know if you've seen them before but they do a lot of their giveaways and live promos only during the live stream all the details will be in the description box info box below i also want to let you know if you want to purchase anything through lux du jour you can use my coupon code amy150 it's going to save you 150 dollars off of any purchases over a thousand Canadian dollars and you can use this coupon internationally for those of you who don't know Lux Du Jour is a Canadian one-stop online luxury boutique where you can shop sell consign rent restore and accessorize your bags they have their corporate office in Calgary, Alberta, but they've also just recently opened a new office in the US in Irvine, California. They carry so many of our favorite brands, especially Hermes, Chanel, Dior, LV. I often get asked, Amy, where do you sell your bags? Or what is a good place to sell pre-love in Canada, especially? Sometimes I sell privately, but I also go through consignment stores and I myself, even before I've done any collaboration with them, I have sold so many bags through Lux Du Jour. Yes, they do have a rental service, they have a spa service, and of course you can buy and sell your bags through Lux Du Jour as well. For those of you who are wondering which bag I have rented from them before, it was exactly a year ago where I compared the Hermes Mini Kelly to the Mini Lindy, and now I have those two bags because I've had the chance to try those on. I knew they were for me. So without further ado, let's dive right in. The official dimensions, right, for the Constance to go and the Kelly to go, it's eight inches across four and a half inches high and the top right here like the the fattest part that will expand is about 1.75 inch uh, slightly less for the Kelly to go but very similar the Chanel walk is literally just about the same height as the Constance to go. I mean, it's maybe slightly, ever so slightly taller, but they're very similar. And of course the Chanel walk is a lot shorter. So the Chanel walk measures 7.5 inches in length, also about four and a half inches tall, just maybe a smidge more. It looks like it's wider because you have like this thick flap and everything, but the inside, compartment like right here is really just about an inch and a half. The wallet on chain has a strap drop of 24 and a half inch. Strap drop of my Constance to go is just slightly over 21 inch whereas this one is just like a smidge from here to here is just a smidge shorter than 21 inch. The Chanel walk comes in at 396 grams. So Chanel walk being the heaviest. The Constance to go is about 315 grams versus the Kelly to go, 277 grams. Just to give you some info for this Kelly to go, it is a Y stamp Kelly to go. So it was made in year 2020 in color Bleu Brume, Epsom leather, palladium hardware. It came with all the original packaging except the felt material because yes, normally with Hermes, you do get the felt material too. Um, but other than that, everything was included. The condition was described as 9.5 out of 10, which is fair. I would say the wear and tear on this one, a little bit of the yellowing of the edges on some parts of the leather. The hardware has, uh, you know, some normal wear and tear, you know, the scratches from daily use. And I would say um, it's interesting that they remove all the stickers except the one underneath it and yeah the interior is very clean this is the back side so a little bit of yellowing 
but otherwise in great shape and I would say 9.5 is a fair assessment of the condition. A lot of people always assume that the Constance to go is bigger when in fact they are exactly the same dimension. I kid you not, I was just as surprised as as you are probably right now. In fact, now that I look at it, I think the blue one is slightly longer. I mean, it's very close. It's only by a smidge, but again, I don't know if it's because these things are handmade or whatever, but they are identical in size from the exterior. The only difference is in the material, of course, and also because of the closure, you can expand the bag, the constants, a lot more. Especially if you were to close these, but even if you don't close these, it's harder to expand the Kelly because it's all Epsom, including the interior. As I've shown you in my previous video, the constants is not just all Epsom, it's actually lined in a lot of Swift leather. So it has a lot of Swift and very soft texture. So it's not as hard, like, you can tell, like even opening the wallet, it's very supple. It has this kind of luxurious, very malleable feel to it. Whereas my first impression of the Kelly is that it's actually kind of stiff. And as you're like even holding it, it just feels like you're holding cardboard. Again, it's not necessarily bad because a wallet you want it to be robust, but it's just my first impression feel. The Kelly wallet definitely feels more hardy, like it's hard <laughs> versus the Constance where it's soft and malleable and kind of like nice to touch. With the Constance to go, I feel like it's a more luxurious wallet on chain. It just has this sort of like very, um, nice and flexible and just like malleable material. The interior is also lined in Swift leather. So you've got here in Swift leather, uh, you've got right here in Swift leather and all of that backing in Swift leather and even right here in the back pocket. So there's a lot of surfaces where it's just so glorious and beautiful and shiny and just soft and just, just nice to touch. In terms of closure, for me, it's a pro and it's a con. For the Constance to go, it's very easy to get in and out. It's literally just this closure here, which is super easy to open and close. But of course, the con of it is that it just gets all scratched up. And I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up, but all of this area right here, like right here, is has these tiny little micro scratches. It's like all scratched up. But it's inevitable and of course um, you guys know that I take out my stickers right away so it gets scratched up after one use. The Constance to go is known for the multi compartments that it has. So the Constance to go has a total of seven compartments. And so let me just demonstrate which seven I'm talking about. So the front right here is one, two, the zipper one is three, four, there's one here, five, there's another one here, six, and there's one in the back, seven. So there's a total of seven long compartments and six card slots in the Constance to go. The price of these wallets on chains from Almez are extremely, extremely high. In the US, it starts at 5,500 US dollars. In Canada, for the lowest one, starts at 7,150 of course, plus tax. So you're talking about a wallet on chain that is upwards of $8,000, right? So these are very, very expensive wallets on chains. For me, the Kelly to go just has a less refined construction. Let's put it this way. For me, the Kelly to go is kind of like just hardier. It's just hard. Like it's just a hard piece of wallet. Um, and uh, it's, of course, understandable because it's all lined and uh, the whole thing is in Epsom. It has a very fussy closure. And I think anybody who owns even Kelly bags can attest to that. You're literally trying to align this little small rectangle through this turn knob here. So it's really not that easy to open and close, especially when you're in a rush. Of course, right now it's completely empty, so 
it's kind of easy it looks easy but it's in reality you really have to aim at exactly that when it's full you've also got these sangles to contend with which a lot of people just leave behind the bag to make it easier of a life but you know they're still there and they still get in the way when you open and close your bag and if you want the full look then yeah you need to put on the sangles the other big con and like it's probably one of the largest con for me is that the kelly to go does not come with a back pocket and this is so unfortunate because i mean the back pocket on any bags not just these two makes a huge difference in terms of something that you can reach in and out very very quickly a parking ticket a little room key whatever something quick access without having to go through the main compartment one two and the zippered compartment because there are none on the back and there's no other slip pockets uh, so you're only really working with minimal compartments on the kelly to go it's not necessarily a bad bad or the worst thing but sometimes when you want to separate different receipts or different currencies um, the extra pockets really do come in handy i do use a lot of the compartments in my bag um, and last but not least it only comes with four card slots on the kelly to go whereas the constance is six it's just a lot more simple a lot of people are attracted to is the zipper pull <laughs> So just to show you this cute little zipper pull, it's like a Kelly lock. Let's close it up like you would normally when you use it and just give you another side by side so that you can really see the difference. Um, so here you go. That's the Kelly and that's the Constance. They definitely have a very different vibe although the dimensions are <laughs> exactly the same um, but yeah they do look fairly different from an aesthetic point of view okay let's talk about the chanel walk i'm so excited to be able to do this comparison for you guys so here's a side by side very very different vibe of course very very different wallets on chains it was really really interesting when i did my instagram poll of these two bags or these two brands i was shocked because i literally thought that the chanel would have won by a landslide so that was really interesting this chanel walk is a 28 series black caviar with silver hardware and i can see that the sticker is still on the cc it also came with third-party base shaper and this little clip here the condition was rated to be 9.5 out of 10 and i would say this is fair the only sort of like wear and tear that is the most visible is this little this little dot here and it's from this zipper closure and this one didn't come with the authenticity card and it didn't say on their website that it would come with it anyway but it did come with the original dust bag we all know how chanel packaging is even for their small leather goods they have really beautiful dust bags on the other hand with hermes for such expensive leather goods like this is a very expensive bag i call it bag because it's like a bag price but it's a very very expensive small leather good and yet it doesn't come with any dust bags it only comes with the original felt material so this is mine this is my own box it only comes with the little tissue paper the dust bag for the straps and the ribbons which you would get in chanel too so i would say package wise from the original retail chanel is better let's talk about some pros and cons my first impression of course uh one of the cons in my opinion which is a pro for a lot of people is that the chain is way too long for most people that have an average build or especially for petite ladies this chain is gonna like go all the way to your thigh because it's this material which is a much more substantial you know metal and everything it can dig into your shoulders especially if you are wearing this bag for a long period of time it has an impressive six compartments plus six card slots remember this one has seven so this one still has six which is very very good one in front right here two with the zippered pocket three just behind the zippered pocket four main compartment five with the secret compartment right here which goes all the way down to the bag so you can slip your hand all the way down 
And then last but not least, number six, which is this small slip pocket in the back. And like I said, it doesn't matter how big your back compartment is, like that back pocket, as long as you have one, it's useful. In terms of the aesthetic, I do find the Chanel Walk to be slightly more younger and more casual. I think it's the whole chain thing vibe. Another pro for Chanel in general is that they just hold their value extremely, extremely well. In fact, sometimes in the second hand or consignment market, they are way more inflated than their retail price. So there's that going on for Chanel in general. That is not to say that this wallet's not gonna hold their value very well, but I do always say this and is that if your item retail price is already so high to begin with, it is a lot harder to perhaps break even if you were to decide to sell your items later on unless you've got it a long time ago. So that is something to keep in mind in general. These two items have gone up in price by a lot, but still, this is like almost double the price of this. As of the date of filming, it's 3350 USD plus tax. More entry pricing, this is like really high up there, super expensive, especially in Canadian dollars. You're looking at 8,000 for this, 5,000 for this. It's a huge difference. It's a big enough difference that it makes you think really hard. All right, guys, I think this is the part that you guys have been waiting for, which is how do things fit in these wallets on chains and which one fits the most? This is uber, uber full right now. I would never really stuff it like that, but this is just to show the maximum capacity that I am still comfortable with and it's manageable. So right off the bat on the back compartment, you can see that I have a receipt in there and also a card. So right here, when we open this wallet up, you can see that it's super, super full. And it of course fits a full size phone. The most front compartment, which is right here, this thin compartment, I have some cash. So this is some Canadian currencies. The main compartment, one of the main, I have my iPhone 13 mini tucked in. I have a couple of keys in the back compartment. I have my card keys on top, a full size lipstick on top as well, a packet of tissue. There's still six tissues in there. So there was 10 and I used up four. And then on the side, we had a hair tie and also this metal piece, which is my trusted bag hanger. I recommend to everyone to get this. The card slots, I used up four. Here in the back compartment, which is why I love this bag so much, I can segregate the different currencies. And that's pretty much it for the constants to go, but as you can see, it's a lot. It fits a lot. It's everything you can possibly need on a day-to-day -day basis. So here's the Kelly wallet. I was able to fit all of the stuff that I had in my constants to go inside. So it's all the stuff in there. Only issue is I can't close it, guys. <laughs> so this is everything, right, that I had in the constants to go. And the main issue is, again, the fact that you have to loop through this thing here. The Kelly to go does indeed fit less than the Constance to go. And I really do attribute that to the fact that it's a harder material. It's not as flexible as the Constance. And also the fact that in order to close it with the Constance, you can still sort of like force the flap over because all you need to fit is that H bar. Whereas this one, if you can't fit it through here, it's over. You can't like, it's just so hard. Like it's so hard. You can't close it. Uh, the material is just not flexible enough. I have to remove these two things. Now it closes. They literally look the same size, right? But the Kelly is just a bit too rigid. And now that you have everything inside, if you were to close these, it's a lot harder now too, because now you really have to pull at it to close the whole wallet. See how I'm trying to open it without without making it more wear and tear, but it's just impossible. There's just no way with the Kelly, you really have to go through this. So in the front compartment, I have my phone. Um, because it doesn't have all these other compartments to segregate the things, I, I just had to put them all together. So the compass card that was in the back, I had to put it in the front, the receipt and the Canadian cash. Um, it has my loose keys here. 
Of course, the front also had two card slots. I used up all four card slots. In the middle compartment, I have my US cash, just so that I can separate them a little bit. In the back compartment, I have this and the packet of tissue. The fact of the matter is that, yeah, the Kelly to go is a lot more simpler design and just a lot more restrictive because of the material. So right now we have everything, everything that I had in mind constantly ago. Of course, it maybe depends on how you, how you rearrange it. So maybe this way will be better. I'm guessing with the tissue paper kind of horizontal. Oh yeah, I think it's a little bit better. Plus you still technically have some room right here. Let's say you want to bring this. You totally can fit that in there. Let's try another lip product. You can do that. And now I think, now I think it's quite full because you, you have to be able to close it and be able to manage it as well, right? I mean, technically you still have the space on top. You can see right there. You still have that space. So um, yes, hands down the Chanel Walk fits way more way way more i mean just these two items alone they're pretty bulky and you can still fit more on top the good thing about one compartment one main compartment is that you don't have the separation which sometimes can kind of limit you uh how how much it fits because now you're just working with one compartment you just have to tetris with one compartment from the front to the back so the front compartment i have my canadian currency in my zip compartment, I have the US currency right there. Right behind that, there's this small slip compartment. So I have my receipt. In the main compartment, we have tissue on top. We have the lipstick on one side. Below that, I had my car keys. Oh, and my loose keys and my car keys. They're all just kind of all in there. They're all kind of like just stuffed in there and the bag hanger and everything and of course the phone everything has to go in the main compartment because that's the biggest compartment right it has to fit there and of course i have used four card slots nothing in here and also i have uh one card in the back which you know this can be a room key or whatever no wonder the the walk has been a cult favorite because it fits everything so in terms of a wallet bag if you're looking to buy the largest size this one is your number one followed by the constants followed by the kelly but of course aesthetic plays a huge role in your decision right so that's my one of the things that i decided to go for is the aesthetic plus the convenience and the size so for me the Constance to go was a great in between the beauty of these wallets on chains. It's its versatility. So let's show you how that looks on me. You can see a big difference in the strap drop. This one is 21 inch strap drop. This one is 24 and a half inch. And yeah, it goes up to my thighs. So it's pretty long. The, the wallet on chain is very, very long. This one hits right at my hip bone. Um, again, I am 5'4", just under 50 kilos, and um, yeah, this is how it looks on me. Constance to go on my body frame, and just aesthetic-wise, that's what I prefer. Yeah, as a one-sided bag, it's very, very long. <laughs> uh, but of course, with these bags, I, t I generally tend to wear them cross-body. Of course, the color is going to change the aesthetic, but as you can see, they are more or less the same length because they are very similar. This strap is slightly shorter though. This one just gives me that more sophisticated, more elegant vibe, whereas this one gives me that younger, fresher vibe, um, just based off of aesthetic alone, of course. Reaching in and out of this one can be a bit challenging when your wallet is full. That was one of the big thing. This one is easy peasy, like no issues whatsoever at all one seamless loop so let's just do that and just continue same direction and that way you can really see how it is doubled it properly put it in there and now you just pull this yeah, your strap is in one direction it's not just twisting and everything you can just kind of like do that it's one direction 
and it's properly closed. So yeah, you see the vibe? It's like just gorgeous. Super elegant, super beautiful clutch. And then the Kelly as well. Yeah, they're both very elegant. You can totally leave the straps on or you can uh, remove them. That's the beauty of this bag as well. So, I mean, they're both beautiful. The, don't get me wrong. The, the Kelly, once you close everything up, all the closures, all the sangles and everything, uh, it's so elegant. It is. It really is. This one is just so easy. You don't need to do anything to it. It's already super elegant. Looking at these two colors, obviously I like my bag more, but this color is just so fresh and I really need, I really just need to get myself a light color bag. It's so fresh. This color is so beautiful. A lot of people also kind of just crisscross it to make it shorter or maybe they use the clip. It's less of a crossbody length now, but it's it's definitely cute. Um, I mean, you can still crossbody it. It's just a little bit shorter. So that's what you're working with. Double up is very pretty and it's definitely nighttime appropriate. And like compared to this one, they're very, very similar vibe. They're both very elegant, beautiful nighttime bag once you double it up. In fact, with the jewel chains, it just makes it even more elegant. <laughs> with this bag, it's just so, so, so very long. What if you only own a regular wallet and you want to transform it into a to-go wallet? An option that you can consider are these converters. With any long wallet, you would just use their long converter. So this is their long wallet converter. It's made of three millimeter felt. You just put it in the wallet and that's where the chain goes. And they don't just make it in gold. They have it in silver as well. So you just order the right color for you. You can use these in your Chanel card holder or any other card holders that you have. This one is a really cool one because this one is an adjustable chain with the Chanel inspired pearl crush. This little ball here, which is so cute, is totally adjustable. So you can wear it as a belt bag or a crossbody bag and you just adjust the chain that way. It's super cool. Look at that, it's so cute. Even with the Chanel chain, it's so cute. The same thing with this version, which is also another of their adjustable chain, but it's just like a gold chain. Again, if you wanna buy anything from Lux Du Jour, you can use my coupon code AMY150, which saves you 150 Canadian dollars of purchases of a thousand or more. Mark your calendars. Don't forget to join me this Sunday, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Check out the details in the info box and also follow me on all my social media. Are you more of a Chanel walk or a more of an Hermes walk? I'd be so interested to know now that I've compared all three for you, which one you are more. If you have any more questions while I still have the bags, please let me know quickly so that maybe I can do a follow-up. I'll make sure to link some videos that are relevant that you might be interested and I'll talk to you guys in the next one or on the live stream this Sunday. Bye! Bye.